I look up, but I'm trying to think. I have all these things I'm doing to Hi, welcome to a new Plugin Groove video. My name is John Skippy Limkul. Welcome. Hey, so I'm having fun showing, um, I'm gonna be showing you guys a little taste, it's not done yet, of OMG Drums Urban RMX for Omnisphere 2.4. This is the last library we will be releasing for version 2.4. 2.5 comes out next month. Uh, the Violin Library, um, any Patches People program will be showing up in the library for version 2.5 so you'll have to update for that but this is for 2.4 so it will also work with 2.3 2.2 2.1 this is a library that originally started as a break tweaker library you can buy it and other libraries at my website pluginguru.com that's where you go for these patches uh tim dale just released a 256 patch nothing but bpm Really creative. People are flipping out and writing me really nice notes. It's being used in all sorts of projects and stuff already. Um, but if you go here to, let's say, Break Tweaker. This is a library for Break Tweaker. Now, this is being called OMG Drums Urban RMX. And the reason it's being called that is that I've taken what started in Break Tweaker. And we took all these bass and sub sounds. They're available in Serum, so you can go down here to Urban and it's right there. And these are all really cool, but it doesn't have the drum grooves. It's just the keyboard sounds. The drum kits are available inside of drum kits for Super Macho drums for Contact 5. If you have my drum kit uh, instrument that I've created, um, you can get these kits for that. The grooves are great. There's MIDI files, all that stuff. Um, and it sounds like this. This is the... Uh Right? Well, it's RMX because I'm taking it much farther than just that for Omnisphere. Omnisphere has so much more capabilities. To start with, you have a kit version, which has all of those samples that were used to make the groove just like you have in Break Tweaker. You have the loop version where I've used the arpeggiator for each of the samples to create it as a groove. You can jam with it. Right? You can take it to the groove, which is what you find in the other OMG libraries. They have groove, which is where it's set up across the keyboard. Bottom low C starts to groove, and then this is actually a three way split, so you can. Modwheel does cool things, it takes down the hi-hats, adds reverb to the snare, it changes parameters in the synth sounds. This goes, the lead sound gets distorted, and in this kind of stuff, pitch spin is kind of useless, so the pitch spin wheel takes out the kick drum. Pitch bang back down. Okay. RMX is something new. That is where I have taken this, added steroids. I've read the warning label about the side effects and tore it up and threw it in the trash. So we now have... sit down you play it the drum groove is on low C to start just like the groove but I've made it even more deeply programmed so it does a lot more there's a new thing here called map map takes these remix versions which are the really cool super hip ones and makes it so that you can do this check this out so if I sequence this let's go OK, 
Okay, so I have this. So a new feature for the uh, this OMG library that I haven't done before that I thought up is that maybe you want this. But maybe you want a different drum groove. And you could go over here to the arpeggiator and make this whatever you wanted it to be, right? So you can make new patterns this way. Go to the hi-hats, right? But what if you wanted to program it more simpler using your sequencer? That's where map comes into play. So by calling up a map, it takes the RMX version, which is a really cool hip version, and now I can hit play in my sequencer and I have it playing just the keyboard and the bass part. And I could go over here and I can play drums and sequence whatever pattern I want. So it's in there. I can quantize it because I didn't play it quite in time. So the map maps the drum sounds and it also allows the sub to go down to A, which is important because sometimes you have songs that go below D flat, right? And when you're playing the groove version, that's the lowest you can go. The next note, C, starts the grooves up. So there's times where you want to go below that. So map takes care of all these things. It lets you program your own drums, bass extends, so you can do more stuff with it. So <laughs> there's kit, loop, groove, groove remix, and map <sighs> for all 45 of these kits. So I'm in the process of making all of this. <laughs> and I came across something that was really cool I wanted to show as a tip. And let's, let's, I'm going to show you a couple others that are really cool. This is Anthem. The original Anthem is a really cool, very rowdy kind of, let's see, 64, so I'm a little fast, but. Right? And then the, the groove version, you could play. I need to get my keyboard back showing. So go like that and turn back on. I have Serum hidden underneath here, so you can see a keyword. Right? Now, the remix version of this is so dope, I must share. So let me speed this up just a little bit more, like, like 95 beats per minute. And uh, check this out. Ready? All this stuff is coming, but I got to Dazed, and Dazed originally, let's see, let's do it this way, let's play Dazed over here in uh, Break Tweaker. That's the original, right? If we go over here and we play it, uh, well, let's slow it down so it plays right first, so it's 60 something beats per minute. This is where it's playing all the parts. Right? The groove version has really cool. Now they're separated out so you can play new chords, any key you want. The, our, the remix version is just so insane. Let's say 80 beats per minute. And here's where we want to add our tricks. So um, let me show this and then we'll talk about the tricks I want to add. So here it is. So it's 
really cool. I have a patch I made called Dazed Delayed, right here, Delayed Grower, because you play, let's just solo this for a second, just to show you a couple of the tricks. You play, it just slowly shows up. And then the mod wheel does some cool things. It's adding in harmonia of an octave and two octaves up. When you bring the mod wheel up, that's what's really cool with having the ability to control the volume from here. If I want to make it even more expanded, go like this. I also do this with the wheel. Very cool. Um, let's save that because I keep, I, I'm working on these as we speak. So wait, I need to turn off solo, save. But I want to play with envelopes. And I was thinking, this is one of those things I haven't covered in a video. I'm gonna do more videos like this. I know I'm talking a lot about other things beyond the tip, and you just gotta deal with that. But here is the tip, and it's a good one. Um, when you right click on most parameters in Omnisphere, you can see that you can use envelopes to control things, but you can't change the actual envelope. When you go down here to the envelopes and right click on them, you can assign a, a controller, like a MIDI slider controller or something like that from hardware, but there is no internal architecture to modulate the envelopes, it would seem, but there is. What you do is this. I've got, here's the, the there's two places I wanna play with this. On the bass, I wanna have this envelope get longer and shorter like this. Short and long, right? That'd be pretty cool in this groove. do something like that to just add a little bit of harmonic fill up the sound and then kind of go away that it that ear candy stuff is really cool in productions so let's do this here's how you do it you would say um new modulation routing and then you go down to the list and we say well we want this to be an lfo and there's no other lfos doing anything i've already set up this lfo you want to use legato sync set it to one major and then right here, you go down this list to envelope and you see under envelope, all of these parameters. These are the parameters to change the envelope speeds. <laughs> it's really cool. The depth is for the mod envelopes. They don't have the ability to change the rates and so forth there. But the amp and the filter, you can change the attack, decay and release, which is really useful. So if we go to release and the trick to this is this. It's kind of a tricky concept, but you want to set the value at the maximum amount that you want, like that. Then hit invert, and then as you bring this up, this target, let's bring down the depth so we don't hear any change. I can set this to where it's the same as if the slider was all the way at zero. Let's say I want it to be like that. Now bring up my depth. And I can control how far I want it to go in this throw. And the other thing I've done is I've hit the plus button. That tells this envelope to only use plus values. Do not use negative values. Because normally, you see that line through the LFO? Normally, it goes inverted the same intensity as it is positive. So if I turn this off... When I have it go like this, it goes far below the, the zero to where it's kind of clicky. You hear that? I don't want it to do that. I, I purposefully set my release time exactly where I wanted it. So by using this plus button, it doesn't let it go negative. So it will go down to the value that I set it at for this, but not beyond it. So that's very important to use that for this type of modulation of the sound. Okay, so now. So you hear that little bit of space in the phrase. That's really nice. 
That's possible to be done in Omnisphere even though you cannot do it directly from clicking here. The other place I want to show this is on the snare. The snare... Let's see here. I want to make sure it's all set so I can do this. So if we go over here and change the release slider on the amp, they ring out really long. I've shortened them because it's kind of a hip thing right now for things to just kind of have unusual space to them. Like everything else can be this... This has this ambience and reverb and the drums. That snare being short really gets your attention, right? But when the module comes up, I currently have reverb. Eh, I don't like that. I want it to be the actual release of the drums to bring out these reverb that's in the samples. I want that. So here's how we would do that. You hit link since it's, it's two different snares. So we hit link and we want to bring this up to the maximum amount. It's going to ring out. And then let's turn off B so we're only working with A because this is something you have to do to each envelope. You would say new that I want to use, let's say the pitch pin wheel and I want it to change the envelope release time. Envelope amp is the one that's going to control volume. Filter is for if you're using a filter, e.g. So we're not concerned with that. It's just the amp to shorten the release of the actual sample. And just like before, hit invert. And as you bring this up, you're bringing the slider back down to its minimum value where you want it to be. So. Make it really short if we wanted to. If you want, you can hold down shift and that'll let you get to like find values. I want to be kind of abrupt. And then the mod wheel. There. So it's short. And now it's long. So let's go to B and do the same thing. So we say new, just to make sure it pops up and everything's set and good to go. Make sure I invert is something we're going to do in a minute. But if, it's, if, if invert or mute or on, turn those off. So it's just init, ready to go. And same thing. This is the release time maximum. This has a fairly short envelope, but it still will make a difference to say we want to use the mod wheel to change the envelope release of the amp, invert, bring this up, not 100%. We want to be like, hold down shift, there, that's good. And it's getting louder too. So I think that's because of the auxiliary. I think we're going to go back. Truth be told, I want to add the reverb too so that we get both. But let's turn on layer A. Cool. So now we got Humble's playing. So it's really fun to get dynamic volume envelopes happening. And this is a fun way to do that using LFOs to change the release time of the bass and mod wheel to change the release time, the length of the sample playback of the snare. So let's save this with our changes. Save and now I only have 40 more of these to go. So hope you like that tip. More to come. There's more tricks to show you. Um, I'm going to do some fun videos. So I hope this helps you, gives you some more ideas on the possibilities and the power of this specific synthesizer. It's pretty amazing. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Okay. See ya.